Recently, Minecraft added new mob variants that change the way cows, pigs, and chickens look in certain biomes. How accurate are these mob variants? Mojang says they've based the new mob skins on real world animals. For example, the warm pig variant is actually based on the red river hog. But would the red river hog actually live in all the biomes that Mojang says it spawns in? Well, today we're going to find that out and a whole lot more about how ecologically accurate Mojang made these new mobs. Here's the biomes that the warm pig spawns in. We're going to walk through each one to see if that red river hog would actually be able to live there. First, let's jump on into the savanna biome. Here we are. All right, first impressions. The savanna is a very open prairie-like habitat with grass kind of as the only vegetation around. Grass alone is not going to cut it. In real life, the red river hog lives in the Guinean and Congolian rainforest. They prefer areas with dense vegetation and plenty of nearby water sources like rivers, marshy valleys, and swamps. So they really need a rich environment with access to vegetation year round. So I'd say this is a no for food. Walking around, I'm seeing there's very few water sources and grass being pretty much the only cover. That is not enough to provide the habitat structure they need to survive. Now let's look at the climate. If you didn't know, every biome in Minecraft has a built-in temperature rating and a humidity score. And you can check these values in game by hitting F3 and you see the T and the H right here. That's your temperature and humidity scores. And they only range from zero to four. And according to the Köppen-Geiger climate classification, the Red River Hog mostly lives in tropical rainforests and monsoon zones. These are areas where temperatures average in the 80s and never get below 64 degrees Fahrenheit and it rains pretty much all year round and there's not really any dry season. So the temperature looks about right but that humidity is way off. They needed at least a three or a four. Yeah it looks like the savanna biome pretty much missed the mark by all means. And looking at the other two savanna biomes it's pretty much more of the same and honestly it's a little worse than the other ones. No savanna for this species. Why don't we take a look at the jungle next. First off the climate is already looking a lot better. Just looking around there is a lot of diversity of places life. We see grasses and ferns and these little things that represent shrubs on the ground. And melons actually grow in jungles as well. That's that fruit component we're looking for. This biome definitely provides the right food for a red river hog. As for the habitat, I mean these shrubs are perfect cover that the species needs and there's plenty of water scattered all around. The jungle biome gets an A++. This is ideal red river hog habitat. The other jungle biomes are a little worse for wear. Like the windswept jungle is a little thin. It doesn't quite have enough cover but I'm gonna give it a pass for this. And the bamboo jungle has plenty of cover. It doesn't have as much diversity of plant life, but I think the red river hog would still be able to survive. So based on that ecology of the red river hog, the warm variant pig should only be spawning in our jungle type biomes. But if you did want to add a more realistic representation for pigs in the savanna biome, I would recommend adding the common warthog. This is the only pig species that's adapted to grazing in dry grasslands like this savanna. I get why they didn't go for the warthog look though. He's, uh, he's not quite the looker. He's actually pretty, pretty ugly, actually. That's an ugly, ugly pig. That is an ugly, gross pig. All right, next up is the cold variant pig. So it's pretty clear this variant takes visual inspiration from the blonde mangalitsa, which is a domestic pig that was originally bred in Austria-Hungary in 1833. While they're best known for that thick and woolly coat, they were actually originally bred for its lard and fatty meat. Unfortunately, because this pig is a product of human domestication, we can't really figure anything out about its ecology. They kind of just live wherever people chose to keep them. And actually, biologically speaking, pigs in the Suidae family as a whole aren't really built for extremely cold environments. Their range is mostly in tropical and temperate forest, so not really the snowy landscape type. Yet in Minecraft, we see the cold variant pigs spawn in these biomes. We're gonna have to find a non-pig real-world stand-in. So my pick? the moose. Moose are distant relatives of pigs. They're both even-toed undulants and fulfill a similar ecological role. Moose and pigs eat similar things like leaves, bark, and aquatic vegetation, and they both leave a visible impact on the vegetation structure by breaking shrubs and churning up soil in certain patches. Plus, moose actually live in the biomes that the cold variant pig spawns in. So my recommendation to Mojang would be retire that cold variant pig and replace it with moose. Now let's move on to the temperate variant pig. So this is just the normal pig skin that's always been in Minecraft, and it's clearly based on the domestic breed, the British Landtrace. This breed is known for its short, wiry hair and pink complexion. That's not what pigs look like in real life. Like we said, domestic breeds are a bit too messy to understand anything about their ecology. So once again, we're gonna have to get a little creative with our real world stand-in. So based on these biomes that the temperate pig spawns in, I think the Eurasian wild boar is our best option. If you live in the United States, you've probably heard of the Eurasian boar's uh, invasive reputation. They've just gone hog wild! And 
And these boars are pretty much generalist, but they do need three main things for their habitat. Mild climate, dense vegetation, nearby water, and minimal to no snowfall. And when we look at our biome list, I think the boar could honestly live in all of these. But why don't we rank them just to see which are better fits and worse ones. The swamp's gonna be the best biome. There's lots of vegetation growing and the ground is soft that'll make it easy for them to root around in the soil, water to drink and wallow in, and there's those frogs hopping around. That'll make a tasty treat. Next would be the dark forest. It's very dense with plenty of hiding spots for them and lots of understory growth for them to munch on. Third would be the forest. There's trees around so there's cover and there's enough vegetation growing on the ground to keep them well fed. Next would be the flower forest. It's a little less dense. There's lots of flowers that they can munch on but there's not a whole lot else. The birch forest is after that only because the European boars actually have a preference for oak trees and without those in the forest they're kind of less likely to be here. And then we have the cherry grove. It's kind of higher elevation which makes it harder for them to live and there's less vegetation. And the sunflower plains and plains are both a little bit too open but I think the European boar could make do. To Mojang I would recommend changing the skin of the temperate pig to not look like a domestic breed. It's not some pink pampered lantrace anymore. It's a wild animal and I think the skin should reflect that. And that's all our pig variants. Let's move on to the cows. First and foremost the warm variant. Once again Mojang didn't really give us any hits on what real world animals inspired this one but looking at the design it has skyward facing horns. It's got this reddish brown hide and it spawns in pretty much the same biomes as the warm pig variant. Based on these factors I landed on the African forest buffalo. It has that same reddish brown hide and similar skyward facing horns and they live in the same warm climates. This species can be found in the rainforests, marshes, and savannas of West and Central Africa. So their diet consists mostly of grasses and other shrubs that grow in these savannas. Looking at the savanna biomes I think it's pretty obvious these are perfect. I mean the trees are very thin here. There's lots of grass growing and looking at the temperature it is just right. The jungle itself is a little thick. I think the African forest buffalo would choose to stick in areas that are thinner in vegetation cover which there are in the jungle biomes but it's variable and you can see there is plenty of grasses and ferns growing in the understory so I'd say jungles get a pass. The sparse jungle is probably the best option for the forest buffalo though because it has naturally sparsed out trees and plenty of grass growing. It seems to be a common theme the badland biomes look like crap I don't really think the forest buffalo would be able to live here. The wooded badlands might just squeak by because it has thin tree cover and there actually is grass that grows here it's this short dry grass and tall dry grass so I'll give it a pass this time. Let's take a look at the temperate cow variant. Visually the temperate cow has the black and white piebald markings of a Friesian Holstein. This is the most popular dairy cow in the world. I mean when you're thinking of cows this is what you're picturing. Anyway we're not going to talk about this cow at all. You know those domestic breeds don't tell us squat about ecology. And choosing a surrogate based on the biomes the temperate cow spawns in was not easy. In fact I couldn't find any good real world stand-ins that weren't already domestic breeds. None that are alive at least. So for our purposes today we're going to be looking at the extinct auroch which is considered the ancestor of all domestic breeds of cattle. Aurochs are large pitch black cattle with huge horns and they had an expansive range. Unfortunately aurochs went extinct due to overhunting and the expansion of human agriculture. There go humans killing everything again. I think the plains, sunflower plains, and swamps would be our best biomes for the aurochs. Aurochs prefer to low flat landscapes. Things like grassy plains, riparian forest, and wetland edges. So the auroch would be very well suited for these biomes. But I also believe that the flower forest, the forest, and the birch forest could potentially house aurochs as well. Mostly because there is a good grass component still in the understory, but the trees are a little dense. Although the forest would be a slightly better pick because the oak trees will be dropping acorns that'll supplement the aurochs diet. The only biome that I think wouldn't have any aurochs is the dark forest. This is really dense with trees and vegetation can't grow as well in the understory, so this is a no-go for the aurochs. Other than that, Mojang did a great job with this mob. If we just change that skin to look a little bit less like domestic cattle, we'd be in great shape. Let's move on to the cold cow variant. Everybody was really excited for this one because Mojang announced that it pays visual homage to the Highland cattle. Airing from the land of Scots, or Scotland, this infamous cow is known for its long sweeping horns and luscious locks. It's one of the oldest and most distinguished breeds of cattle in the world. Unfortunately, because it's domesticated, it doesn't have any meaningful ecological relationships, so we won't be looking at that today. Or I'm just the worst. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But based on the biomes that the cold variant spawns in, I think I found the perfect real world comparison. Native to the barren landscapes of the Arctic, I present to you the muskox. This ice age survivor once roamed alongside mammoths and is built for the extreme cold. They've got two layers of fur, a long shaggy outer coat, and a soft inner layer called kiviet, which is one of the warmest natural fibers on earth. In fact, it's eight times warmer than sheep's wool and softer than 
in cashmere. It's so valuable, a single sweater will run you about $900. Gee whiz, who's buying that? And here's a fun fact, musk ox actually get their name from the musky odor they give off during the breeding season. I learned they actually just pee all over themselves to get that signature scent and the ladies just can't resist. I might have to try that one myself. Habitat wise, musk oxen stick to tundra and alpine regions and they tend to avoid dense forests like the taiga. They prefer more open landscapes. And taking a look at this biome list, uh, I think there's a couple we know aren't gonna work. Starting off with the taigas, it's obvious this ain't musk ox country. All of these biomes have dense forests. This will not cut it. Also, just real quick, why the hell is this called the old growth pine taiga when the only tree that grows here are spruce trees? Get your conifers right, Minecraft! Pine needles grow in bundles called fascicles and spruce trees grow singly and they're usually much smaller. It's not that hard. Anyway, moving swiftly onto the windswept hills, this is a mountainous region with lots of exposed rock and grasses and shrubs, which is perfect for grazing and foraging for musk ox. Combined with the minimal tree cover and the low temperature and humidity, I'd say this is just right for musk ox. And actually, the windswept gravelly hills don't look too bad either. Despite the name, there's still a bit of grass and vegetation growing on these hills. I don't think the musk ox would thrive here, but in a pinch it would do. And finally, the windswept forest. This is the most vegetated of all the windswept biomes with lots of grass, flowers, and shrubs for the musk ox to munch on. The catch is that there's more trees here which we know musk ox aren't a big fan of. With that said, the tree cover isn't nearly as dense as a typical taiga. The temperature is good, the humidity is a little high, but overall I'd say a musk ox could make do. In reality, the best biome for the musk ox isn't even one the cold cow spawns in. From my research, the snowy plains is actually the best biome for musk ox. It has flat, tundra-like terrain with lots of short grasses and flowers, and snowy plains often border frozen rivers, which perfectly reflects how musk ox spend their summers in river valleys near meadows. Jagged peaks, snowy slopes, and groves would also be good choices for the musk ox. They really capture the look of the alpine tundra winter range featuring sparse trees and really low vegetation covered and snow. Let's move on over to chickens, and first up is the warm variant. This one, I picked the redneck spur fowl. This is a chunky, ground-dwelling bird found in much of sub-Saharan Africa. It's part of the Frank Colon group with distinctive bare red skin around the eye and on the throat. Visually, it doesn't really look like the warm chicken, but the habitat and climate overlap surprisingly well. The redneck spur fowl likes moist savannas, thickets, grasslands, forest edges, and cultivated areas. Savannas have that open habitat vibe that these guys like for foraging, but there isn't a whole lot of cover. I think all in all, the redneck spur fowl could manage here. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the jungle, which has plenty of cover and food out the wazoo. This resembles the forest edge habitat that these guys narrow in on. The only thing that looks better than the jungle is the sparse jungle. Not only does it have that variety of vegetation, but it's a little more open, which provides better foraging opportunities. The bamboo jungle is a bit less ideal, not really providing the right cover for the species or the right vegetation to forage on. So this one probably isn't a good fit for the spur fowl. As per usual, the badlands just don't work at all. There's hardly any veg growing and just no cover for the species. But I found another great stand-in for this biome. Introducing the scaled quail. It's nicknamed the cotton top quail and if you ask me it actually kind of looks like the warm variant chicken. This guy is native to the southwestern United States and it loves grasslands, shrub steps, and deserts. And funny enough, that aligns perfectly with the dry open conditions we see in the badlands in Minecraft. Overall, I'd say the redneck spur fowl is a pretty solid match. And on to the cold variant chicken. Mojang revealed that this one was inspired by the white crested black Polish chicken. Instantly, this one's recognizable by the big fluffy pom pom of feathers on its head. This guy's really cute, but unfortunately, it's not ecologically relevant. For a real world comparison, the spruce grouse is a much better fit. This is a stocky, medium sized grouse native to the taiga biomes in North America. And not to mention, but it's actually my favorite bird if you couldn't tell. Yeah, I'm awesome. These guys are blackish overall with white barring on the chest and males have a really striking red eyebrow comb. They're extremely arboreal, meaning they spend most of their time in the trees, which makes sense given their dependence on spruce and pine trees for food and cover. And no surprise here, all the taiga biomes fit this species perfectly. With plenty of spruce trees and even red berry bushes on the ground, you couldn't ask for better spruce grouse habitat. Unfortunately, that means the windswept hills and the windswept gravelly hills just aren't gonna cut it. There's no trees here, and that is a number one requirement for this species. The windswept forest could do in certain circumstances, but it's usually pretty sparse in the tree department, I'd go with no generally. Mojang, please consider changing the cold chicken to look a little more like the spruce grouse. It's a really unique species and it has a special place in my heart. And finally, we're on our last mob, the temperate chicken. Once again, this is a mob based on a domestic breed of chicken, that being the leghorn. This guy's known for his all white feathers and infamous red comb, but you 
all know the rules. Domestic, Domestic animals, animals are not, are not ecologically, ecologically relevant, relevant because of the distribution of the term human intervention, intervention and environmental, environmental factors. factors. That's right, and we got a way to wean them out. I'm just going to pick another animal. And this time, I'm going with the wild turkey. <laughs> Which isn't exactly like the chicken, but it's a ground-dwelling bird that fills a similar ecological role. Like chickens, turkeys are omnivorous and feed on seeds, berries, insects, frogs, and even small lizards. They're native to North America, and they prefer mixed forest with an oak component. They also do just fine in pastures, fields, and seasonal marshes. And at a glance, I'd say all these biomes work for the turkey, but let's go into some specifics. The plains biome has that look of an old pasture and provides lots of grass, bushes, and flowers for them to forage on. This one gets a big pass. The sunflower plains is a little iffy given that it's pretty much a monoculture of sunflowers. Although I am seeing a good amount of grass growing, and these scattered oak trees provide acorns which is a big component of turkey's diets in the fall. I'll tentatively give this one a pass. Tentatively. Tentatively. I'll hesitantly give this one a pass. Next, the forest is a slam dunk. This is exactly where I picture turkeys living. We have a strong diversity of trees with oaks and birches. There's plenty of grasses, flowers, and bushes growing on the ground, and the temperature and humidity are in just the right range. This is primo turkey habitat. The flower forest has pretty much identical conditions to the forest. It just trades out that grass for a huge array of flower species, which is great because they provide plenty of seeds for the turkeys to forage on. The birch and old growth birch forest both look pretty good with plenty of flower patches around, albeit the vegetation is a little thinner here. We're also seeing a lack of overstory diversity with birches as the only tree species here. But in the end, we'll still give it to them for having that open forest structure, the right climate and temperature, and just enough ground veg to scrape by. Honestly, the dark forest is probably the weakest biome for turkeys. This canopy is way too dense, it's blocking all the sunlight and hardly any veg can grow on this forest floor. However, this biome does compensate with an abundance of mushrooms and leaf litter patches which harbor insects the turkeys will feed on. So while the habitat isn't ideal, I think turkeys will still manage to live here. The swamp is the next biome and I'm liking the open space layout of the trees here. Also, there's lots of good plants to forage on here like the firefly bush, in the blue orchids. And in case you forgot, turkeys are omnivores, so they'll be going after those frogs. While swamps aren't typically thought of as turkey habitat, I think this'll do just fine. Mojang knocked it out of the freaking park with the temperate chicken. And if they ever wanted to give the chicken mob a visual update, I'd love to see them lean into that turkey look. Holy Moses, that's the last of the mob variants, folks. Boy, what a doozy. To help you visualize it all, here's some side-by-side -side tables to show you how each mob variant stacked up in its biome. So, the big question. Are mob variants biologically accurate? The answer is, it's complicated. Some of the temperate species, like the wild boar and the turkey, were spot on, but others, like the red river hog and the musk ox, were way off. I mean, if we look at this table, 52 out of the 72 possible mob variants lined up well in its biome. So that's a score of 72 out of 100. I'd give you a solid C. You know what they say, C's get degrees. So I'd say, yeah, mob variants have pretty good biological accuracy. Of course, this is all just a video game, and I don't mean to throw any actual shade at the developers, but if they did want to continue down this path of making Minecraft more realistic, this is a great place to start. These are super easy changes to add just by adjusting some mob skins and where they spawn. While I tried to be as accurate as possible when choosing the real world animals, these are definitely up for debate, so I encourage you to leave a comment if you have a better suggestion. At the end of the day, this was a super fun exercise and I hope it got you thinking about how animals interact with their environment inside and outside of Minecraft. Anyway, my name is Organic and I will see you on the flip side. The flip side? Fuck!